בעזרת השם, רבי נחמן of Breslev, he is saying to us in Torah 138, ניפוטי מוהרן, קל"ח, ניפוטי מוהרן, לך אמר ליבי בקשו פניי, to you, my heart said, to you, my heart said, בקשו פניי, you should ask for my face. Torah 138. Yes, it's Chalik Aleph. Kuf To you, it's a very, very hard verse to understand. Lecha, to you, Amar Libi, my heart was telling, Bakshu Panai, ask for my face. Bakshu Panai Tami, you should ask for me always. פרש רש"י, אין רש"י אקספליין, בשליחותך. He was your messenger. Makes things even harder to understand. To you, my heart was saying, ask for my face, look for me. רש"י said, as your messenger. Who, to who? רבנו is explaining. The main place you can find godliness means the root of your soul is in the heart. Like that it's written, Tzur Levavi. Tzur is the name for a stone, but a very strong stone, but it's also a source of creation. So it's one of the names of the creator, Tzur. One of his names is Tzu. So Tzu, the source of creation, that it's him, it's that stone that you can carve, you can, you can build from it. It's a very strong source of, of, of materia, of stone. It's my heart. Tzu Levavi. So the source of the Creator is in your heart. The source of creation comes from inside. I'm explaining that many times, that the connection to the Creator, even though that your Rabbi can tell you, you must learn Torah. Okay, if you came and you said, and you learned Torah, you opened the book and you just read it, that is an external connection. You read from a physical book. The real learning is your deeper inner understandings about, it's not the book itself. The book is holy because it's a tool. It's, 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 is being used for learning Torah. The Torah has been written on it. But the main learning, the main connection, the conclusions, the understanding, the spiritual development is all inside. It's in your heart. It's what you're going to do with the limud. There can be two people that are going to sit in the same class. One will be rewarded and one can even be punished. Why? Because one had foreign thoughts and he was disrespecting the learning and he doesn't want to keep it at all. His heart is not there. And even against rejecting and fighting and, 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 and shaming the learn in his heart, only in his thoughts. And he can be punished on that disgrace. And the other one will be so inspired and, and rewarded, means he will come closer to Hashem through that learning. Only because that his heart was aimed to Hashem, he had good intention, pure intention. Rabbi is telling us that the main connection to the Creator is in our own hearts. Like that it's written and explained, well explained in Torah Memte, Torah 49. And Rabbeinu is saying, and that person that got the heart, that he is sensitive, that he is pure heart, that he is good heart, in the aspect of the verse, my heart is empty, space inside of me. We just now said that he is sensitive, means that he feels in his heart. You need to empty your heart if you want to feel, if you want to use it. When it's stuffed with lusts and desires and angers and sadnesses and frustrations and, and, and all kinds of, of thick blood, so you cannot use it in its spiritual aspect. You're stuck with 
a machine, a physical pump machine, organ that works or not, but you cannot enjoy from the spiritual um, aspect of it. You cannot enjoy from what it really, your heart can, can help you and you can use it for. You won't enjoy the potential of, of the spiritual heart that's inside of you. Like the Rabbeinu is bringing in another Torah that you have two verses that are talking about the heart and they both, they both, the first letters of both of those verses are building the word chalav. One is that verse, chalal libi bekirbi, chet, lamed, and bet, chalav, it's milk. So your heart is pure and empty and clean. And also the second verse is building the word chalav, milk, and it's cham libi bekirbi. My heart is hot, flaming with, with, with desires, with lusts. So I've been over there in that Torah explains how important it is that the mother of the child will be pure in her mind, that she will be a good mother, a holy, righteous woman. And then when she's nursing, feeding her child, so in her milk, it so much depends. If his heart will be pure and clean from lust and desires of this world, or if it will affect him in a negative way, that he will burn and, and, and suffer from the heat of lust and desires. It depends in the milk of the mother, in the purity of the mind of the mother. I once had a conversation with a, a very big rabbi, a very righteous man, and he was talking to, be about, talking to me about a certain woman, and she said that that woman, she's very pure, and that she's, that she's very, um, and that she's righteous, and she's modest, and I asked him, based on what, what, what is the thing that brought you to say that? So he said, because she loves her husband so much. You can see how pure she is. It depends on how much she loves her husband. That's the purity of her heart. So, where is it bringing us to? To understand how important it is for you to help your wife love you and not hate you and not be disgusted by you. Because if you will not going to behave nice and well and in an honorable way, in a sensitive way, so she won't be so happy, I won't respect you, I love you so much. So then you can help her to love you, and by doing that, she will be pure. Like that it's written, Isha Yo'at Hashem Hitit Halal, that the woman that she is Yo'at Hashem, that she has got complete faith, fear from heaven, she will be praised. So you can learn it, okay, she was so righteous, so everyone didn't praise her, but that's a regular shot. There is a deeper meaning that, based on a very deep Gemara, amazing Gemara, that is explaining that the woman righteousness, Kedusha, purity, the fact that she will not gonna sin and that she will be holy depends in how much her husband is praising her. Ishai at Hashem, a woman that have feel from heaven, complete faith that she never sins, it's a woman that has been praised by her husband, always respected and honored and, and, and received compliments from him, based on the Gemara that is telling us about a woman that she sinned and she failed her husband in eating meat that was not kosher and so and he ate blood because she was afraid of him. It was the eve of Shabbat, and she prepared the food, and she forgot to put salt on the meat. And when it was already the Suda, he asked her, did you put salt on the meat? And she was afraid to say no, because she was afraid he's going to scream at her, punish her, or whatever, she's going to suffer from him. So she said no, like it's, uh, yeah, it means yes, everything is kosher, and he ate the blood. And he failed because he was hard on her, so she failed him. It's not it, like the Gemara, that's the conclusion of the Gemara. 
that it was his fault that he was hard on him. So you need to reveal your, your kindness, your mercy, and by that you're helping that wife, your wife, to want to serve Hashem. She needs a purpose, she needs a reason. So, to that we came from what that Rabbeinu, that verse that Rabbeinu is bringing, the purity of your heart, and also it's written that in I think it's uh, Rabbi Chaim Vital, but I'm not sure. I think it's Rabbi Chaim Vital, um, the student, the main student of Darya Kadosh, that explains the, the way of creation, and he's saying that when the Creator, the ends of Baruch Hu, the endless inf- infinity, wanted to create the world, so there was no place to create, because it was all full of his godliness, of Elokut, it was all light, all the, there was no world, it was eternity, and it was all shining and illuminating and full with his godliness, so there was no space, there was no place to create anything inside, so he found, those are things that we cannot understand, but he found the central point, a point in the center of infinity, of eternity, and he moved himself to the sides. Silek atzmolatzdadin. He moved himself to the sides. And by doing that, he created an empty space that is empty with nothing over there. That's a halala panul, the empty space. And then he sent a beam of light into the center of that emptiness. And from that center, central point, he started to create the worlds. And like the Gemara is bringing, that that beam of light created, first of all, Eben the main stone that we know that is, was used as the altar on, on Harabait, on the holy mountain. And from that stone, Hashem Yibach created the world, Jerusalem first, and then the rest of the cities, and the land of Israel, and, and that's how the world was created, like the Gemara is explaining, describing. So, if the Creator Himself to create, when He wanted to create, the first thing that He did was to remove His godliness to the sides, and the purpose of the creation was to reveal His Rachmanut, Legalot Rachmanuto, He wanted to reveal how mercy He is and how kind He is. So for that, what He had to do, He had to move Himself to the side. That's what He had to do. If you want to show how mercy you are, how kind you are, you need to move yourself to the side. It means you need to give from your time. It means you need to give from your wealth. It means you need to give from what that is. That's Avodata Midot. Avodata Midot, it's not only attributes, it's not only your manners, your way of behavior. It's also Midot means measurements, sizes, and weights. So it's all to create. Like we said in, before we started the class, that when a person is learning Torah, so he's creating the world. And the main will of the Creator for us, by giving us the Torah, that the Torah will teach us the, the, the way to behave, how to, how to respect, and how to care, and how to be generous, and how to work on our midot. And the Torah is full with measurements and weights, and the deeper meaning of all of what that we do while learning Torah is learning how to control our temper and how to be patient with each other and how to care and how to love and how to give from our time and how to know exactly how much to give and how where to stop and how much to to contain and how much not and a person needs to check it and inside of himself where am I holding what's really my ability and what is in my power because sometimes you want to give and you give too much and it pushes you to sadness and to depression and, and to anger, to, to be frustrated and you lose your mind and you say, hey, why was I giving it? And Maybe you were not supposed to. Maybe next time we're not chasing ourselves and, and judging the past, but you can learn to take conclusions from, from the present to the future to understand that if really you cannot give as much as you gave, because if you give too much, it drains you, it takes from your happiness, it takes from your power, so don't give that. 
but you still want to give more, okay, so pray for that, so work on that, but know your limits, know your power. So the purpose, if we want to create something, if really we still do want to make something happen, to make our life useful, we do want to make something happen, to create something, we need to move ourselves to the sides. So Abenu is saying that the person that got the heart, in the aspect of libi halal bikirbi, means that he's got an empty heart, he's got a clean heart, he's got a, a heart that is that that his purpose is to reveal his mercy, it's to be kind, it's to have patience, it's to care, it's to love, it's to to create, to do for for others, for the world, to reveal godliness inside inside the emptiness. So he Yuchal Lida Atidot. He'll have the power to know what will happen in the future. Everyone wants to know what will happen in the future. Today someone came to me and asked me, I have an idea of a business. Can you tell me if it will be successful or not? I don't, even if I would know, I wouldn't tell you. You're going to miss the point of doing, of opening the business, of trying. I'm not saying yes, do it or don't do it. But if Hashem blocked your eyes from seeing it, so there's a purpose for that. The main free choice of a person is to serve Hashem in those twilight zones, in those gray areas that you don't know for sure. If you know for sure, so you don't have free choice, it's clear, I know. So you cannot be rewarded on those things. So Hashem Yidbarach, because He wants you to choose, that you will choose life, and you cannot choose when you know it all. So he must take the knowledge from you, the ability to see. So to know futures is something that it's, it's, it's complex. So to who Rabbi is saying that Hashem will give that power to know the future? To a person that his heart is clean. Because if your heart is not clean and you're going to know the future, you're going to twist things because of your desires, because of your will to succeed, because you must have money, you must have success, you don't want that person to hurt you, you're afraid. But when your heart is clean, so all of your will is aimed to Hashem, and you're ready to nullify yourself completely to Him, and you want only what that He wants, so Hashem can tell you also what will happen in the future, and it won't damage you. The reason that he's not telling us the future is because he wants us to have the free choice. But when the free choice is in your hand, Rabbi Nachman is explaining the verse Matai Lokim Biyadi that Moshe Rabbeinu was holding the staff of God. So Rabbi Nachman explains that that he was controlling the free choice completely. He had the power to choose in one hundred percent. If it's written on Moshe that he was angry, Moshe Rabbeinu chose to be angry. He decided to be angry. He was not furious and explode now. He lost his temper. Not at all. He chose now to be angry. And even if he'd been punished on that anger, it was in his mind. He was ready to be punished. Because he had mate, mate means to tilt, to move it from one side to the other. He had the free choice in his hand. He could choose completely. He had that power, Moshel Berucho, he controlled his spirit to choose every time. And a person that has that power, he can know the future. If you have the free choice in your hand, and that's the main thing that the person should work on, to come back to who that he is, to control himself. Because he's, why, why a person is suffering? Because he lost his mind with his wife, he was upset, he was screaming at her, whatever, and now, for two weeks, two months, he's going to fix that mistake. And the truth is that also in two years, it's going to come back to you again. But you remember, they never forget. There is a reason why they cannot forget. The reason that they cannot forget is that they are different creation than men. Men been created from earth, from the ground, and if you scratch the ground and then you move the, the, the sand, the earth, so you won't see that scratch, it won't leave no mark. But women, they've been created from the bone, from the rib of the first man. And if you scratch the rib, you cannot erase it. It's their nature. They cannot forget. It's who that they are. 
So you need to be careful not to make mistakes. So how are you going to do that? You need to clean your heart. You need to clean yourself as much as you can. Because you can't make mistakes. Because it's going to come back to you. And we don't want that to happen. At least I don't want it to happen. <laughs> so that person that will clean himself, he can know the future. By what that his heart is telling him. So a person that is working on himself should count on his feelings, should count on his senses and his emotions. And it depends only in if you are serving the Hashem or not. If you're doing the best that you can, if you're aiming your will to Hashem, if you're trying to do the best that you can, you must believe in yourself, and that's real confidence in Hashem. Bitachon Hashem. It's to know that Hashem is with you. Not only if you did the right thing, also if you fail, Hashem is there with you. Even if I found myself in hell, like King David is saying, here you are. Even if I walked in the valley of death, shadows of death, I won't see anything bad because you're there with me. Even if you made mistakes, there is always something that you can do that will help you to repair, to fix. It calls tshuva. And the Zohar Kadosh is saying that tshuva mo'il lakol. Tshuva helps for everything, for every avon, for every sin. That's the biggest gift and how you do tshuva in your heart. You understand you made something wrong. Now you know it. You need to bring it into your heart. To bring it into your heart, it's to express your regret. To regret in front of Hashem. Like the Rambam, Akadosh is explaining to us, Hilchot Shuvah, Hilchot Shuvah. That's it, Bodedut. What the Rambam, Akadosh is explaining, the explanation of the Rambam, Akadosh, in Hilchot Shuvah, and in Hilchot Filah, in the Oraita, what the Bible is telling us that we need to pray, those two commandments, that's the definition of the Yitubodadut by Rabbi Nachman Yibreslev. That you need to confess, that you need to regret, that you need to express the sin, that you need to empty your heart from that desire that brought you to sin. And that's the way to purify the heart. Only through tshuva. Because a person now, he sinned. So... The Torah is explaining to us, an Adam Chote, a person will never sin unless some Wachshtut, some bad spirit, came to him. It was an act of, of nonsense, of, of, of childish. He wasn't thinking, that's why he sinned. He acted like a child. So, what made him act like a child, make that mistake, that sin, that he didn't control his temper, that he had lusts that were blocking his eyes, that he was so passionate about doing something, that he was so afraid, terrified, he was not thinking right. So that person, he's got those thick bloods that we spoke about before. Something is stuck inside of his heart, some sin, some avon, some crime, something from the past, and it's filtering the blood. And Rabbeinu is telling in Nikotei Moran that the blood that is thick and we want to purify and we want to clean that blood, the way to do it, it's to serve Hashem. What does it mean? That when that thick blood will go through the heart while you're serving Hashem, keeping a mitzvah, the heart will purify that thick blood. And if you're going to serve Hashem in Barach 24-7, in the end you're going to purify all your thick blood. We know that there is blood that's stuck inside the very thin organs inside of our body that it takes a lot of time until it's run back again to the system. So we need to serve Hashem a lot, as much as we can. And by doing that, we're purifying the blood. The heart is purifying the blood. And then we become holier and holier, coming closer to Hashem. So the main way to purify and to serve Hashem and to com- commit yourself to Hashem, it's like the Hashem is saying, which work you can do with your heart, it's to pray. So the prayer and the tshuva are two mitzvot that are actually one. Because you need to pray 
to ask for your needs, that mitzvah, that tefillah, to ask everything that you need from the Creator, and also to ask forgiveness on all of your mistakes. You do it in the same way, just on two aspects, on two parts of your life. Confessions, praises, thanks, and requests, all through prayer. So, Rabbeinu is saying that a person that will have that ability to know the future, how he going to know the future, by what that the heart will tell him, that it's the words of Hashem, mamash. In English you say mamesh. Mamesh. Divrei Hashem mamash. So, that's the challenge. Now to believe that Hashem is speaking to you from your heart and what we're going to do with all of those lunatics that are going with that feeling and, and uh, like killing their, their, their wives and whatever because Hashem told me I heard voices. Like we said before, you need to know yourself. You need to know that when your heart is aimed to Hashem, and how are you going to know it? You just need to check yourself. No one can tell you where you're holding, but you know the truth. Many people rather to run away, to escape from responsibility, and they're going to say, no, I don't know, I'm confused, I can't tell you, I don't know. Ah, the truth, you're talking about the real truth, the ultimate truth, I don't know, I'm a simple person. And they're exempting themselves from using the real ability that God gave them. If really I'm going to ask you a question, I'm telling you, you can tell me the right answer for sure, if it's right or wrong, or if you don't know. But the truth you can recognize always, I met Nikeret, Divrei met Nikarim, you can recognize the truth. If I'm going to ask you, your name is Moshe, if your name is Moshe, you say yes. If your name is not Moshe, you say no. And you know. And if a friend is coming to you and he's blaming you on cheating him on something, stealing money from him, did something wrong to him, and you come and he is blaming you, and you now don't want to deal with that situation because you're afraid, because you have the reason why to do it, but you're not willing to expose it, you're rather to hide. When he will blame you, the truth is that you know the truth. Maybe you're going to choose to deny and to give excuses or whatever, but... You cannot ignore from the fact that your heart is telling you, you know you messed up. If you messed up, you know you messed up. If you were wrong, if your wife rebukes you, if someone tells you something about yourself, if you messed up, you know that you messed up. Maybe you're going to choose to ignore it, to say, no, what are you talking about? Maybe it's too heavy to expose right now. Maybe you want to think about it. Okay, but the truth is that God gave you a fantastic, amazing, beyond nature tool to know the truth, always. If you heard a lecture of a rabbi, if you opened the book, if you read one verse, if you met a person, if someone told you, you had a feeling about it. So I'm telling you now, what the Rabbeinu is telling us is that if your intention are to serve Hashem, the feeling that you will have inside is the right one, and you should know that it's the vrai Hashem Amash, that it's the words of Hashem that is talking to you from, through your heart. And you must believe in yourself, and no one else can help you to come to the right answers, like that you can help yourself if you're going to believe in yourself. If you will count on those feelings and if you will go with them and you're going to pray and you're going to go to Hashem and going to ask Him, but Hashem, how can it be? But I thought, but I thought that that was the right hint. I thought that you told me. What happened over You're going to try to clarify and to find, to sift it out, to find the right truth. You're going to find it. Because Hashem is close to everyone that calls Him with truth. So if you will just read which truth, that rabbi's truth, that amazing, no. Your truth, your honesty, just be honest. Just be truthful, just be who that you are. Stop making fun of yourself and making yourself a loser. No, I don't know, no, it's too hard for me. Say I don't want, no, mornings, it's too hard for me to wake up. Say the truth, I'd rather not to see the next day.
I rather to sleep for another hour. I hate my life. I don't want to deal with them. Say the truth. No one gonna punish you on the truth. On the truth, you will be rewarded, even if your truth now is to say, "I'm a liar." If that's your truth, you will be rewarded on it, because Hashem will be close to you. But even if you're gonna lie, the most beautiful, magnificent lie, no, me, I'm an angel. I'm a Sheikh Tzidkenu. Hashem is not with you. Hashem cannot stand people that are lying. The person that is lying cannot stand in front of Hashem. Hashem rejects liars. Hashem's light, Hashem's fire, Hashem's purity reject all kinds of lies. And who, no one cares from which family you are, which community you are, how much money you have. Hashem doesn't see no one. When it's in judgments, when it's in lies, Hashem doesn't see no rabbis, no admorim, no legacies, no dynasties, nothing. Hashem can't see those lies. Every fake, every lie, it's contamination, it's purity. Hashem elokechem emet. Hashem is the God of truth. Which truth? No. It's in your heart. It's in your mouth. Hashem will tell you. But I gave you the tools. I gave you the power. I gave you those feelings. But you weren't listening to me. Listen to me. Where Hashem? Where is the voice of Hashem? Hashem is calling you from your heart. Calling you. He's calling you from inside. Ask for me. You should want me. Listen to me. Think about me. I'll be there with you. I love you. I care about you. I'll always be there for you. I remember Hashem asked me, have I ever disappointed you? In my bodhidiyot, in my prayers, I went with a complaint to Hashem. And I was arguing with Him. And I told Him, but I was praying for this. I was praying for that. Why He didn't give me? And I was complaining. That's the truth. I was complaining. And then that thought came to my mind. That Hashem is asking, have I ever disappointed you? In the end, I'm not saying during the process that you were already disappointed because you didn't have the power to cross the distance that I set for that journey. I want you to be three months out of a job. I want you to be two days out of a house. I want you to be seven months out of a house. Everyone got his measurements. Everyone got Hashem's will for him. So, but in the end of that time, didn't you see the Shem salvation? Didn't you see the individual supervision, the precise supervision? The hand of Hashem in Barach that was inside your life, that was involved in your life, in your thoughts, and in your nights, and in your days. Weren't you see the salvation of Hashem in Barach? So my answer to Hashem was, you're right. And I backed off because I realized that He will complete because Hashem Ibrach is completing His creation. And if we have the merit not to give up, not to let the difficulties to reject us, and we're staying stubborn, stay still, don't move. Say, I want this and I'm not backing off. You want to buy that house? Don't move. Don't move. You don't have the money? Don't move from praying. You want to marry that shidduch? You want that woman? You want... Pray. I'm not saying push. Don't push ever. Don't do anything in a hidden way. Don't lie to no one. Do everything with honesty, everything with pure intentions, and never back off, never give up on your goals and your dreams. Because if you don't follow your heart, you're going to understand that all of those great dreams that you have are the will of the Creator to give them to you. It's His will to give. Hashem is promising. I will give you lands and properties with no borders. Hashem is so generous. And His mercy is to give even to people that are not worthy. Can you show me who is worthy? The Gemara is saying that even angels are not worthy to receive from Hashem. So people, flesh and bones, lust, desires, confusions, fears, anxieties, are those people can be worthy in any way? The answer is no. But is it changing the love of a father to his child? No. A holy, 
righteous man loves his children even if they fall off the derech. And the Creator, that his heart is beyond what we can imagine. He's got an unconditional, unlimited love. A free love. Love that does not depend in our actions at all. And what it is written, Your actions will reject you or will bring you closer to Hashem. It's in your mindset. It's that if you're going to see yourself sinning, you're going to think to yourself, Oh, now Hashem left me. Now I'm so far. Look at me. What am I doing? People are coming to me with stories. I'm laughing. Oh, you don't know. What am I doing? What have I done? I messed up. I'm laughing. It's nonsense. There is no connection between what that you went through to your connection to the Creator. Whatever you went through in life, all of your downs are only now is your challenge, your test, not to give up and to believe in Hashem Barach, even though that you messed up, even though that you failed. You failed? Great. It increased the challenge, the difficulty <laughs> of the test of your mindset to break the limitations and the constrictions and your fears, no, Hashem doesn't love me. But if you're going to get over that imagination and you will decide, I love Hashem and I'm serving Him because I love Him and I know He loves me and I couldn't care less, you will become righteous much faster than you can imagine. Much faster. Because Rahmanali Babai, because the Creator, He wants the heart. He's seeking for your purity, for your intention. Where is your will? And if you know that you have that good will, Hashem will give you power to know the future, to clean yourself, to love the rebuke. Challenges of life are rebuking you, showing to you that you're a zero. Sometimes Hashem is so mercy that He puts a speaker in your house that every day is reminding you that you're a zero. It's great. It's great, because it asher yohav Hashem yochiach, because God, because God rebukes the one He loves. It asher yohav Hashem yochiach. So what you should do, you should love the rebuke. How are you going to love the rebuke? You're going to accept it with love. You're going to accept that learning, that education, and not going to be scared. Why are you scared from the rebuke? Because you don't want to feel it. Because you don't want to be humble. You don't want to be ashamed now. Why? Because your heart is not clean to hear the full message of Hashem. Because you still want honor and you still want quiet and you want to have your time for yourself and you're selfish. So you cannot receive the whole message, Dvar Hashem, the complete words of Hashem to you. That He's using 100% of the the world of the creation for his purpose to tell you what his will is and to show you and to let you hear until you can understand it and receive it completely and not only from outside the outside is supposed to wake you up to feel what goes on inside and I said it many times in my classes even if you heard the most fascinated class in your life, you sat in front of that amazing rabbi and his words were so powerful, you don't need to follow his advice right now. What do you need to do? You need to listen to your own heart. What happened to me because of that class? When that rabbi spoke, which point he touched inside of my heart? What I felt when he was talking about Shiva. What was I feel? What was my feeling when he was talking about praying and talking to Hashem, on dedicating my life to serve Hashem? What happened inside of me? Because everyone will take a different message from the class, and that's how it's supposed to be. That you will develop, and that he will develop. And that he will grow, and that he will grow. And that everyone will take one thing that belongs to the point of truth of their heart right now. Because through your heart, through your feeling, you connect yourself to Hashem. Why? Because Hashem made it like that. That the heart is the channel, that through that channel, you are wired, connected. You receive the information from heaven, and also you can come back through that same channel. If it's blocked, if it's sealed, you can come back. You can do tshuva. You can come back to Hashem. That's what the Rabbanu is saying. 
וזהו, and that's the explanation, לך אמר ליבי בקשו פניי. To you, the heart, my heart was saying, בקשו פניי, ask for myself. לך בשליחותך. To you, and it's the mission that you sent me to. כאן נזכר ל- like what we explained. כי מה שהלב אומר, because what that the heart is saying, הם דברי השם ממש. Because what that the heart is telling you, it's the words of Hashem, Mamash, Mamesh, like I told you before, and you can understand it. It's not hard to understand. Now we'll go through that verse again and try to understand it again. Lecha, to you, my child. The Orachayim HaKadosh is saying on the verse, and I don't remember the verse itself, but on, I can remember. When you're going to see the animal, the bull of your brother. So the Orachayim HaKadosh explains that that bull, that animal, he is actually the souls of Israel, the souls that fell to the aspect of an animal, that they fell from their purity, And they're now acting physical like that animal. So if you see the animal of your brother, and then the Orachayim HaKadosh is explaining that your brother, Dakut Shagrecho, it's the creator himself. Your father, he's your brother. The connection that you have with him, if you're cleaning yourself completely, is equal. There is no me and you between you and Hashem. There is no him Godliness, oh, so divine. Moshe became Isha Elohim. Moshe became, became the man of God because godliness was revealed through him, went down, poured through his arms, through his speeches. It's the mouth of Hashem that is telling you those things. The heart is saying, words of God, words of God, actions of God. It was an act of God. You could... What's that? There is no person over there anymore. Why? Because he cleaned himself. He scrubbed himself. He purified himself, nullified himself, erased his selfish being completely. And then what there is? Only godliness. Only elokut. He leaves that fact that enod min vado, that there is nothing except of Hashem. And that's what you're going to see. You're going to see him. You're not going to see him. You're going to see Hashem through him. He's going to talk and you're going to see Hashem. They saw both. When they looked at Moshe, they saw Hashem. They realized that they are talking to Hashem. <laughs> so, Lecha, to you, my friend, my brother, Hashem is telling, Amar Libi, yo, my, Amar Libi, my heart was telling. To you, my friend, my heart is telling. Through your heart, Hashem is telling you His heart. Hashem is sending His message through your heart. Bakshu Panai Tamid, ask for my face always. That's his only way. Ask for my face. Ask me to explain to you, to show face in the Torah, Legalot Panim Torah. It means to see the face, to see, to understand, to see the real explanations. So if something happened to you and you cannot understand it, it's too hard. What happened? What just happened? There is a deeper meaning. There is the face of Hashem that can be clear for you, but you need to ask for it. How are you going to ask for it? Simple. Go ask. Go talk to Hashem in Barach for 10 minutes and spend those 10 minutes asking Hashem in Barach your questions. Hashem, I want to know you. Hashem, what just happened? Hashem, why I was being fired? Hashem, why I was so rejected right now? Hashem, why I was so hurt? Why I was so insulted? Why did it happen? Why am I praying and not being answered? All of your questions. Don't be afraid to ask. If you will ask them from a point of truth, Karov Hashem lechol korav, lechol Hashem ikrehu v'emet. Hashem will be close and will be answered to you. Will answer to you. And you will be answered. And you need to count on yourself for that. To go with the inner voice that is telling you sometimes to challenge, sometimes to scream, sometimes to fight. Sometimes to humble yourself, sometimes to humiliate yourself, sometimes to go with weird ways of Avodat Hashem. People cannot understand. 
If you would hear that there was that amazing Hasid, righteous man, he was making circles in the Beit Knesset, in the synagogue. So what now? You also need to make circles? Let's say the Baal Shem Tov in the Beit Knesset, he was circling the Beit Knesset. Great. So now it means that there is some kind of sgula of acting like the Baal Shem Tov, making circles. It's the most stupid thing you can do. Why? Because you're not understanding what he was doing. He had some kind of feeling, some kind of understanding, and he went with that, not because he was the Baal Shem Tov, because he was connected, because also you sometimes feel like making a circle in the Bet Knesset. Walk with your heart. Then do it, but not because the Baal Shem Tov did it, because you feel that that's the will of Hashem from you. So one can do this and one can do that. One can do long periods, one can do short ones. One can feel that he le- needs to learn that Masechta and one feels that he just must hold on only to saying to him this period of time in his life. And more than that, he is not able. And there is a person that realizes that Torah, for now, is not for him. And he needs to feel comfortable and to know that he is not canceling time of Limud Torah because he doesn't want to learn or because he doesn't love the Torah or because he disrespects the obligation of learning Torah just because that really he cannot do that as well with the rest of his obligations like to wake up early and to go and help with the children and run to school, with them to school and then to go back to your job and to work like crazy and then to go and pick them and take them, whatever, and then to come back and making shoppings and live your life like crazy. If you're doing it for Hashem because you want to keep your house sane and happy and kosher as much as you can, so, leitim bitula ukiuma, sometimes not to learn, that's how you keep the Torah that you learn. If now you're not going to learn, it's going to be because of your learning that you learned before. That now you count on yourself, that you understand, okay, it's time to close the book. And not only because we finished the Torah, also because we ran out of time. Thank you very much. In this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator. To remember that it's all Him. Never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks.